Hey guys, if you're a radiologic technologist or a student in training and you're interested in signal to noise and CNR, you know noise isn't good in your image, but you're just not sure what's the difference between these metrics. This is the video for you right here. Hey guys, I'm Brian from How Radiology Works. And I've got a couple of kiddos. I've got one that's a 4 k -er and one that's a fourth grader. Right now is back to school time. So today I'm gonna go through an analogy with you that has to do with heights as far as how to learn what the concepts are in SNR and in CNR. So SNR is what we call signal to noise ratio. So first imagine if the signal that I'm trying to measure about the kids is actually their height. So first we get the four Kers to stand up in a line. I know that's a tricky task in and of itself, but the idea is that each kid is gonna be lined up in a row here and we can go through and measure each of their heights. And again, we're looking for the average height is gonna be what we call our signal S. And if we go through, we can measure the height of each kid. This is what we call each. And then each one has an index we call K. So as we go along, we say one, two, three, that's our index K. So we add those heights up and then we divide by how many kids we have. And that's our average signal. So that's the signal S, right? So we can just draw a line here that indicates the height of the kiddos as they're standing in line. And then the noise. The noise in this case is actually gonna be having to do with just the variation in the height with respect to the different kiddos. There's gonna be some that are a little bit taller and some that are a little bit shorter. And we're gonna use a metric that we call the standard deviation. This is a common metric that defines the noise and we're gonna assume that the noise in this population, as in most populations like in medical imaging and X-ray and CT, assuming we have reasonable dose, the noise is going to be basically on following a normal distribution and is gonna be well characterized by this standard deviation. We don't wanna just subtract the values because those could cancel out if we had some that are higher and some that are lower than the mean signal. So what we wanna do is calculate the standard deviation. And to do that, we're going to do the square of the difference. So we take each child's height and then we subtract that average signal that we call S. We then square that so that we get a positive number all the time. And then we go through, we add all those up and we divide by how many we had. And then because we squared them at the beginning, we're gonna take the square root. And that's what we call the standard deviation. So you can think about there's a line here and a line here that are a little bit higher and a little bit lower than the mean signal. And those lines mean about two thirds of the population is gonna be within those two lines. And there's gonna be kind of this curve that describes the children that are very tall or very short. And they in general will follow this kind of normal distribution. If you wanna know about more about the normal distribution, drop that down in the comments below. We can make another video on that sometime. The SNR now is very simple. We know what the signal is and we know what the noise is. So we just divide the two. It's what's called a ratio, right? So signal to noise ratio is just the signal divided by the noise. Again, that signal was their average height in comparison with the background. And the background here is just the ground, right? So it's just the signal divided by the noise. In medical imaging, we often care more about the contrast, which means how well can I see something within a background? So for instance, seeing a lesion within a background of normal tissue. In this case, the analogy is telling two populations apart. So can I tell those four Kers apart from the fourth graders? And in this case, we said the signal here for the four K, we're now gonna call that S1 or signal one. And we do the same average calculation for the fourth graders, and we'll call that S2. The contrast is just the difference between the two. So S2 minus S1, that's just the contrast here between our two signals. The contrast to noise ratio then is just the contrast divided by the noise. Contrast is the difference between the mean level for those two populations. And then the noise, often we'll talk about the noise in the background. So whichever is the background population, that's where we're often gonna take our noise from. 
Taking this to medical imaging now, instead of populations of kids standing up in a row to have their heights measured, now we just have a medical image and each pixel or each voxel in the image is gonna be one contribution to those populations. So if we have two what we call regions of interest, which basically just means we draw a little shape on our image. So here's a little disc and then all the pixels inside of that disc are gonna be one population. And then all the pixels inside of this disc are gonna be another one. And we do the same metrics that we did there where we calculate the signal in each of those discs and we'll have two signals and then we can calculate the contrast between them and then we'll calculate the noise in a background region of interest in that same way using the standard deviation. Many times in medical imaging, the task is actually to find a lesion in a background which is noisy, for instance. Again, there's noise in our x-ray images and if you wanna know why that is, check out the link below where we talk about what makes noise within our x-ray images. In this case, we have three lesions that are in this noisy background, and they all have the same contrast. They're very difficult to see here because the contrast to noise ratio is relatively low in this case. If we bump it up, we can look here at multiple cases wherein we have one axis of contrast, and as you go up, you can see higher contrast, and we have an axis of noise, and as you go to the right here, you're seeing higher noise. So the best image obviously is the one that has the lowest noise and the highest contrast, which is right here. And in that image, you can see all three of these objects very well. Then in the images that have a lower contrast to noise ratio, once we start to get more noise, it becomes more difficult to visualize these objects. And the smaller object is actually gonna be the one that becomes difficult to see even while we can see the larger objects, we are gonna lose the ability to visualize that smaller object more quickly. For more information on the visualization of objects in a noisy background, especially when their contrast is changing, see our video on the Rose model coming up.